Hi everybody and welcome back to Science Gizmos. Uh, today we're working with our final gizmo. Um, we've been working the last week or so on different simple machines. We've looked at the inclined plane, we've looked at levers, we've looked at pulleys and the wheel and axle. We've looked at how effort or force, however you want to put it, um, can be changed when completing simple tasks when using things like simple machines. Um, and how that can be changed variably. For instance, in the inclined plane, we saw that the longer the inclined plane you used, um, you needed less ants to move objects up the plane. Of course, it would take longer time, but it required less effort. Same thing with our lever. Um, we noticed that as the fulcrum was in the middle and as we positioned our power lifter, we could move larger objects. Our pulley was the same. We noticed that with more pulleys, you could disperse the weight and thus use less effort for people when pulling. The wheel and axle was the same thing. We saw that if you make the axle and the wheel um, just the right size, you could find a good compromise between effort and time spent moving an object with that rope. We're now going to see how these all come together to complete a complex machine, which is like a trebuchet. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so this one can be a bit much to look at at first. So a trebuchet, to very simply put, is like a catapult. Okay, this is what um, knights would use and armies would use in medieval ages um, across the world to help siege castles and destroy um, walls and um, throw things in. Now it's just a fun experiment to see what we can do um, using different simple machines here. Because you'll notice that you have a lever attached to it right here where this moves. Is going to be a wheel and axle. Um, we have almost a pulley system right here, and you have a number of inclined planes to help support this. So we can change the weight of the counterweight here. And notice that as I move this, it changes the numbers here. The payload, again, here, same thing. If I change the length of the rope, I can also change the size of the cannonball we're shooting. I can also change the arm length. This also helps me change the prong angle. This helps determine, for instance, when this comes around the top of this, uh, at what point it releases. So if you push it up here, it's a later release time, down here an earlier release time. This right here, where your wheel and axle is, changes the height of your fulcrum. So I'm going to put mine just right about here. Okay, so you can reset it back to standard, and let's launch this one just to the very basic and see what happens. Launch! Okay, so you can see that it didn't launch correctly. Let's do this. Let's bring this out a little longer. Let's bring this in a little shorter. Let's bring this higher. And let's see if we can maybe make this just a little shorter. Okay, let's try it. Launch! Okay. That'll launch. It looks like it's kind of launching towards the ground, so let's make this down just a little bit lower here. And now launch it. Launch! Great. So, we at least know this will launch and move forward. Let's see it in an actual thing here. So it explains at the top that during the Third Crusade, King Philip II of France and King Richard I of England used trebuchets to attack Acre, its a port city north of Jerusalem. The city surrendered in July of 1191 after two years of siege. So we can add flames, of course, to make this a firing cannonball. We can show a grid to help us understand the perception that we're using. Um, and we can change the atmosphere. And then you can change even the castle for different historical parts. So let's just see if we can launch this one at the castle and try and hit it. This is the trebuchet we just put. Okay. So it'll tell us the different metrics that we have per the launch of our cannonball on our trebuchet. Um, we can discuss the mass, the angle, um, the speed, the distance. Um, and we know that this fell short. So I'm going to go back into my design. And let's say we make this longer. We make this weight a little heavier. Let's see if this works. Launch. 
Okay. Looks like maybe my weight is a little too big. Let's try it again. Launch! Hmm. Okay. Too far out there, it looks like. Perhaps we make this a little longer. And this a little taller. Launch! Nope, doesn't quite work. Let's make this just... Can I make this longer? Nope. Alright. Let's make this a little shorter, perhaps. Launch! Hmm. Let's see what we're doing wrong here. Launch! There we go. Oh, not quite. Okay, that's shooting straight down. So perhaps I need to release it sooner. Launch. Launch. Hmm. See, it doesn't want to launch. We have to make this shorter. Launch. Okay. Maybe make this shorter here. Launch! Oh, not quite. Smaller, perhaps? Launch! Not quite. Launch! Hmm. Launch! Launch! Almost. Launch! Okay, let's refresh my page. Alright. Launch! There we go. Okay, so I have a working one right here. Let's see how it does. Launch! Doesn't quite make it. So, as you saw as I was just putzing around, there's a lots of different ways to adjust this, um, some of which might fail, so you have to get kind of a good feeling. It seems like a good strategy to have is a shorter arm here, a larger weight, and a long string here. And you can adjust very delicately from here. If you need to start over to the point where it does work, if you've just messed around too much with it, you can just refresh the page like I just did. Um, that will help tremendously to reset this and give yourself a better idea. This is meant to be a little challenging. It's not meant to make it um, frustrating, but it is just meant to be a little challenging. When you get a good feel for it, you're going to be able to launch and hit that castle with, with ease. When you're done, um, come down here and complete the quiz so that I know you have seen this and that you have done this. I look forward to seeing your work, and I'll see you guys next time.